as far as we are concerned, I have no regrets. And I will continue to say it, and I have told the president elect, the lessons have come and gone. You have finished that battle. The battle you have now is governance. What Nigeria wants is good uh, governance. And if we, if we want good governance, then we must rally around the president elect. Because if it does not work, everybody will suffer. We will still continue to cry. All we need now is to serve as a president elect. We want to support you to better the lives of Nigerians. It is not to begin to set trap on how Mr. President elect will fail. If he fails, you have failed. So we owe it a duty to give you support. And that support should start from the leadership of National Assembly. Give him that support. Because if he fails, he's in trouble. You know how you work. Some of us are plotting how we make it ungovernable for him. How we make it, he will find it difficult. You are not punishing him. You are punishing Nigerians. At the end of the day, who will suffer? Nigerians. So give him support. Leave your personal interests. Leave about, if I don't support this man, they won't give me chairmanship position. If I support this man, I'm likely to be chairman of offspring. Where I will make money. No. Support him on how you bring policies. How you bring good laws for you and you make good laws for his implementation. All of you, you have come here. As of reps, senators, check yourself. Are you going to work for the interests of Nigeria? If you are going to work for the interests of Nigeria, then give him support. Give him support. So you will not have crisis from the beginning. You will not have crisis from the beginning. <laughs> Particularly in you people, the ruling party. I'm not in your party. Me and Sheyi were on the other side. All senators here, House of Reps, they have no choice but to support how Bola Ahmed Tinubu will succeed in his administration as the president of Nigeria. Some people were worried. Like what Shahi said here when they came to me. This you are doing is not taking a risk. I said, what is it? What is about risk? Let me tell you, there is nothing you do in this life that you will take risk. To marry is risk. Not to marry is risk. To eat is risk. Not to eat is what? Risk. So whatever you do, you must take a risk. This risk I'm taking is a proper one. The risk that will unite Nigeria. And therefore, we must all work together. I told them, even though some of them, their leg here, yeah? one leg here. When they had a Bola tribe as one, they came, okay, the sea road. You, why did the sea road? <laughs> Who told you that I'm the only one that was sea road? Don't you have eyes? So it's important that we have to do things to help this country to be the country of our dream. It's no longer party. It's about Nigerian project, as Shehi, my brother, have said. And that's why we didn't bother. There was no abuse we didn't get. It's not our business. Our business is let us work together to move this country to where the founding fathers of this country why they say there must be one country called uh, Nigeria. So I'm happy. And I have the hope 
Not hope. The one that don't see the same there. I have the confidence so that I will be safe. I have the confidence that Aswaji Bola Amitribu has the capacity <laughs> to change this country. I, I met him first in 2018. 2018. I went to him in his house, Bodilon. I was sent to go and talk to him. How he can join us. I went to him. I said, sir, I hear you can't find me a fit again in APC. Why not join us and let's support one of these our candidates to win the 2019 election? He asked me, who are these our candidates? I mentioned them. He said, look, if it is these ones you have, I will support Buhari 200 times. <laughs> he told me that. He gave me what one that, that element in 2 him. That what one he gave me. And I respected him. He said, if these are the candidates you are talking, I will support Buhari 200 uh, times. I will. And I know he's prepared. Nobody does him power. All of us who saw it. He went and worked for the power. And you will see the benefit of it. When they dash you power, you slack. But when you fight for power, you walk. We are asking anybody. We didn't dash us all. We fought. You are here. Speaker is here. Five B is here. There was nothing they didn't do me here. 2019. They did everything. I, I, we, we refuse. Five B, five B is here. He's my friend. And I realized that when you work for it, that's something that push you to work for the people. But when they come and knock you at the back, come. Come and take it. It's not everybody that will realize the importance. So I'm quite confident that there will be a change. And let us not pray for his fall. Let us pray that God will help him to succeed. And Lagosi just said, keep those who have Nigeria at the back of their mind to be around him. One thing you owe him now, those of you, don't pray selfishly. Pray. Now, God, give him the wisdom to pick those who will look in his eyes and say, Yes, Excellency, this is wrong. Not in an abusive way, but in a respectful way. That's the only way we can grow. Don't begin to pray and fast. God, let it be me. Pray. God should let, make him choose those who will help him to walk to see that Nigeria is better than what it is uh, today. And I know that God will help him do that. And from what, from what I've seen him do, what he has been doing, I am fully satisfied. This is what we're doing as a love coverage they are hearing me. It's not where I will be quoted. No, it's life coverage. Take the video, take it, go and play your house. Don't show you the uh, leaders. They are hearing me. I have committed to support you, not only by voting, but making sure you succeed. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Very sincerely, um, for your cooperation and for the, the services that you render to our country. Because it's not just your institution, but for the country and for our democracy. Um, again, thank you for coming up in large numbers at very short notice. We called this for less than two hours ago. And despite the rains, we are all here. So I want to thank you very much for 
being a partner for the development of our country. I call you again this evening now for a press conference on the public anxiety over alleged plots by the APC to influence the outcome of the petition before the presidential election petition tribunal that is starting tomorrow. The PDP has invited you this afternoon to alert Nigerians and the international community of the shocking revelations, reports, and allegation of plots by the All Progressive Congress APC to influence the outcome of the presidential election petition currently pending before the presidential election petition tribunal. The PDP also alerts of recent intimidation, harassment, threats, and vicious attack by APC leaders against Nigerian youths and eminent Nigerian personalities for speaking out against APC's planned move to install a government that does not enjoy the mandate of majority of Nigerians as expressed at the polling units. The alleged plan onslaught by APC leaders on eminent Nigerians and our democratic institutions, including the judiciary, stems from APC's apprehension. Given the weight of evidence against it, as well as the continuing refusal by the majority of Nigerians to accept the outcome of the flawed presidential election. There are apprehensions in the public space having regards to the reputation of certain individuals within the highest level of the APC who have demonstrated capacity and proclivity to compromise democratic institutions in our country. It will be recalled that on Friday, May 5, 2023, a party raised alarm over the massively condemned comments by the APC presidential candidate, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, at the commissioning of some judiciary projects in Port Harcourt River State, wherein he attempted to corrupt, cultivate, and patronize the judiciary. More alarming are allegations in the public space of attempts by certain APC leaders to compromise the judiciary with heavy financial inducement and to orchestrate trump up allegations, trump up allegations of impropriety against judicial officers. The PDP calls on the APC and its leaders to immediately come clean and publicly address Nigerians and the world on these disturbing allegations and revelations which are already in the public domain. Further to these provocative results by the APC and its leaders to threaten Nigerians with treason for speaking out against the manipulations of our democratic processes by the APC. For emphasis, majority of Nigerians are insisting on the review of the February 25, 2023 presidential election because it was marred by widespread manipulations open alteration of genuine results from the polling units, allocation of fictitious figures to the APC, embracing violation of the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1999 as amended, the Electoral Act 2022, as well as INEC manual and guideline by INEC itself in its declaration of a winner of the election. The bizarre response by INEC which is an umpire that ought to be independent to the petition of the PDP and our candidate Atiku Abubakar, requesting for the dismissal of our petition is further evidence of the complicity, corruption, and compromise of INEC by the APC. I need to emphasize here, INEC in its response to our petition actually went to the fray as a party. They're supposed to be independent, they are an arbiter, but going ahead to say dismiss the petition, it's like akin to a football match where a referee has blown a penalty and is subject to a VAR review. And the referee is saying, don't mind the people complaining. It's a go because I've blown so. That's what INEC is trying to do. It is instructive for INEC and the APC to note that the tribunal hearing is part of the electoral process. 
The APC and NEC are therefore advised to hold further steps to hinder the ability of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal to dispense justice in the matter in accordance with the law. The PDP therefore restates its call on the judiciary to resist and insulate itself from the alleged and reported antics of the APC in the discharge of its constitutional duties as independent and impartial arbiter in the pending petition before the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. It is imperative to say that the reckless violation by INEC of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, the Electoral Act 2022, INEC guidelines and manual in the 2023 presidential election portend grave consequences to our country and political stability as a country. The only way to guarantee peace, unity, and stability of our nation is to uphold the will of the people as expressed at the polling units in the February 25, 2023 presidential election. And the PDP is confident in the ability of the judiciary to decide its constitutional duties in this regard independently. I thank you very much for listening. God bless Nigeria.